Hi friends, welcome to the Blueprint Nursing YouTube channel. My name is Abby and today we'll be reviewing the important topic of chest tubes. We'll cover everything from insertion to maintenance to make sure you feel confident and prepared on the NCLEX. Let's jump into it. Depending on where you work when you're a real deal registered nurse, you may see chest tubes more frequently. Chest tubes are medical devices inserted into the pleural space of the chest to remove air, fluid, or pus so the lungs have room to expand. They're typically used in the management of conditions that can cause an accumulation of these substances. These conditions include pneumothorax, hemothorax, pleural effusion, and empyema. Insertion and removal of a chest tube will be performed by an advanced practice healthcare provider, but as a registered nurse, it is important to be aware of a few complications that can occur with a chest tube and what to do in those scenarios. While chest tubes are generally safe and effective, complications can include bleeding, infection, injuries to surrounding organs, and tube displacement. Bleeding can occur due to damaged blood vessels and should be managed and prevented through careful insertion and close monitoring. You'll watch for bleeding around the insertion site and in the drainage system. Infection can be prevented through the use of sterile technique. As a nurse, you should carefully watch for signs of infection, including a fever and discharge at the insertion site. Lastly, tube displacement. Lastly, the tube becoming displaced can be avoided by checking that it is secured properly on insertion and with subsequent assessments. Chest tubes are often secured at the chest wall, so make sure to let the provider know if that's becoming loose. When caring for a chest tube, there are a few important things to keep in mind. Ensure the dressing fits tightly around the tube, perform a detailed respiratory assessment regularly, monitor for difficulty breathing, trachea alignment, pain, and signs of infection or excessive bleeding. The chest tube drainage system should be kept lower than the level of the client's chest. If the drainage system is a water seal chamber, there should be a gentle bubbling when the client exhales, coughs, or changes positions. If there is excessive bubbling, this can be a sign of an air leak. It's also important to assess for titling or the rise and fall of water in the second chamber with breathing. You'll want to monitor the chest tube for drainage every hour for the first 24 hours and make sure there are no loops or kinks in the tubing. If the chest tube gets disconnected from the drainage system, you'll want to place the end of the tube in a container of sterile water. And as a worst case scenario, if the chest tube falls out, you're going to want to cover that area with a dry sterile gauze. When you're working as a real deal registered nurse, it's important to notify the primary healthcare provider when you observe tracheal deviation, a sudden onset or increase in dyspnea, if the chest tube falls out, disconnects, or drainage stops in the tube within the first 24 hours. Great job reviewing chest tube. Here are our references. As always, thank you so much for reviewing today's topic with me. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all things Blueprint Nursing. Check out our TikTok live study sessions, crash course, and live study group options. See you next time.